Good morning, folks, and welcome to the Northern Healthy Foods Initiative webinar on greenhouses for Northern Manitoba. I'd like to welcome all our participants this morning, and I know that we've got a, a webinar where there's lots of good information that is hopefully going to be useful for you and for your communities and possibly for yourself if you're looking at uh, constructing a greenhouse. We've got a number of communities and folks registered. We have folks from Brochet, Winnipeg, Peguis, Weiwei Sakafo, and points all across Manitoba. So I know this is uh, apparently a topic that lots of folks and communities are interested in. We've got a really good presenter lined up for you today, somebody with a lot of experience and knowledge about greenhouses and greenhouses for Northern Manitoba, Dr. Sajad Rao. He's an instructor uh, and researcher. He works out of Assiniboine Community College in Brandon. My name is Marnie McCracken. I'm the Farm Production Extension, Extension Specialist out of the PAW office. And our webinar manager is Lori Forbes, and she also works out of the Manitoba Agriculture Food and Resource Development Office in the PAW. Now, this, re this uh, webinar, if you have questions as we go along, I would encourage you to type them into the question section on the right-hand side of your screen. And we have an opportunity towards the end of the presentation where Dr. Rao will be able to answer any questions you might have. And if you have a very complex question that we might not have the answer to, don't worry, we, have your, we will have your contact information and we will be able to answer your question later via email or, or whatever system might work for you. Okay, so without uh, further ado, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Dr. Rao, and he's got a lot of really awesome information to share with you this morning. Good morning. This is Sajad uh, Rao from uh, Assiniboine Community College. Uh, so as uh, I'm going to introduce uh, the presentation today. So we are going to talk on the greenhouses for the Northern Manitoba. Uh, I'll just go a little bit brief on what uh, the Asinoman Community College or myself or my role is doing in this uh, point of uh, applied research in horticulture. So what basically I focus, there's a three main themes. Uh, what uh, we focus here is the development of some new technologies that can be utilized in the rural or the rem uh, remote communities, in particular uh, in Manitoba province. So that's the one of the main area where I focus. So when we talk about the production technologies, so it's a greenhouse is one of the main technology which I work on. Uh, the other thing is how we can improve the uh, existing food production systems so they can become more economically viable and it's a commercially feasible uh, within the province and out of the province. And the third thing, being in a college and uh, being in a research center, so we focus uh, in a training and the capacity building of the communities and the peoples or the organization or the students or the learner to just to make sure that we are addressing the skills and experiences required for the food production. So these are the three main focus areas which we uh, which I work on. Uh, so that was the broad. So if we move on to the next slide, so what we are going to focus it today. So uh, what I'm going to focus today is the greenhouse uh, for the Northern Manitoba. There's a lot of uh, greenhouses has been uh, uh, made, developed, uh, I will say uh, experienced, and uh, it has been means as a prototype is being used. So there's a lot of things happening uh, in terms of the greenhouse production in the northern, uh, northern Manitoba. Uh, but today what we try to see and what we try to answer and what try to see or learn is what exactly the greenhouse structure or the type we need it. It's based on the locality, it's based uh, on the location, it's based on the resources availability, it's based on what uh, purpose we want the greenhouse. There's a different types of uh, greenhouse, different structures. It's a sustainable, non-sustainable model. And if we decided based on what we want exactly, so how we can construct. So what is the construction? What will be the construction material will be? And uh, because in the remote areas or the rem uh, remote communities, uh, we have to find out the sustainability first. So whether this material is available, accessible, and is affordable or not. 
and whether it will uh, go for lasting long or just like a short term uh, use. And then what will be the approximate cost? So different model has been already been working over there and people they are using and they're producing uh, different types of the food or different types of the crop in different uh, structures. So what we are, uh, I'm going to uh, present here the structure and types, the construction. I will share you some of this picture from uh, our Asinaboin community greenhouse. When it was built, it was erected. So I was, I will say fortunate enough to see all the uh, phases of the constructions from scratch, like from a, just like a ground and then erected into a sustainable greenhouse. So I was involved and in looking around all those things. So how it has been built. Although I'm not a, a civil engineer or a construction person, but it's my interest because I have to work in that greenhouse. So I have some pictures which I would like to share in this presentation as well. Uh, so when we talk about the greenhouse structures, there are different types of the greenhouse structures. So like this slide, you can see there's an even span where the roof uh, from the eaves to the ridges and the same on the both sides. The light distribution is very even. And mostly these type of the greenhouses is being used uh, for commercial production in the uh, southern uh, side of country. Uh, let's say uh, in the British Columbia or in the Ontario, the, all the commercial production or whatever we see, the wine tomatoes or the cucumbers or the bell peppers, they are all coming from this type of a even span greenhouse. So they are polycarbonate type of a twin films uh, have been used for as a glazing material and different material has been used. So that's the one of the most popular for the commercial production uh, in the southern areas of Canada and elsewhere. Uh, the uneven span, that's an, an, another structure. So when we don't have like a flat land or we want to have a, some hilly area or some an obstacles in between and we want to uh, build a greenhouse in that area where we can use uh, as a, a slopey area and we can capture as much as sunlight and uh, it faces direct to the sun. So basically the whole purpose of uneven is just to make sure we are utilizing the space with making a greenhouse in a way that we are uh, capturing more sunlight. So that's some called the uneven type of uh, greenhouse. The other one is the lean to greenhouse. So this greenhouse is mostly popular in the areas or in the communities uh, where we have a building structures. Let's say an example of we have a big barn or uh, we have a small uh, training center or we have some community center, or we have any other building. So we can attach this lean type uh, type of a greenhouse structure to the existing building. And we can use some of those resources or we can share the resources from that building as well. Let's say it's a power. If you want to have some power in that build, uh, in the greenhouse to run the electricity or the uh, lighting conditions or the heating uh, heaters or any other uh, power operated things so we can use the building for that purpose so it's connected to the wall or it's to the existing structure or on this side on the south side of the wall or or on the east or west side of the wall so the make sure we uh, it, it, it's running from east to west so it is a south facing so it capture most of the sunlight uh, just to make sure that there's a good amount of the sunlight is coming. It's light is not only basically uh, providing the lights uh, to the plant inside the greenhouse, it's also becoming a source of heat as well. So we have to make sure it's running east to west, uh, either it's on the back of the roof or either on this uh, side of the building or whatever the structure you wanted to have this lean type of a greenhouse. Uh, these uh, type of the structures of the greenhouses, basically they are now commonly says in the high tunnel, low tunnel type. So it's called a quonset type or as a semi-circular uh, arch type of a greenhouses. Uh, they don't take much load of a, a snow uh, on it. It's uh, ventilations are not very easy in this type. Yes, it is in, uh, inexpensive to construct as compared to the uh, other three type of the greenhouses, what we have just discussed. And within the same range, there's another called this a Gothic arch. It's a similar to the concert. It has a gable down in the center and it can withstand with the uh, like a more heavy snow loads. Uh, it's a little bit uh, better in terms of uh, 
uh, structure as compared to the concert this one and the these next ridge and flow greenhouses basically they they are one roof greenhouses their floor is one under the same floor under one roof but they look like an uh, even span both side even span so these type of the greenhouses basically is for the big businesses greenhouses or it is an expansion of a greenhouse it's if you want to expand your greenhouse you have already you have selected your location or the area for the future five to ten years and you want to make a one greenhouse and then remove the wall and attach another greenhouse and then attach another greenhouse or use for multi-purpose uh, greenhouse for multi-purpose productions so in a range you we can use these greenhouses so in uh, in general the it is called an a uh, frame greenhouse so this depends what type of the glazing material we uh, want to use so we have uh, we have to decide what type of the uh, glazing material for good uh, light diffusion another one is the sawtooth it's again on a large area uh, it has some vertical openings between each roof but normally it is not being used in the tropical areas so these type of the greenhouse like the sawtooth and if we go uh, on the previous slide ridge and furrow they are commonly used in the area where they are the tropical regions so they are not very common and it's not uh, like a recommendable they need a lot of resources a lot of energies and its sustainability is a little bit of a doubt in uh, in terms of like in manitoba conditions or in the northern conditions so uh, i will say yes but we uh, can make if affordable if sustainable if we have a location if we have a site for those and if the community is growing or the area is growing we are production is growing yes definitely we can go for that but it will become a little bit expensive now there are some other growing structures as well different communities they are using uh, in northern areas in brandon or in other manitoba areas so it's called the cold frame high tunnels hot beds they are small production areas basically so they're not for a whole commercial uh, production or not the year-round production so like cold frames we can use to grow the plants and just get a passive heat from the sun it's a small structure you can made up of a wood uh, frame or on top we can just put a glass on top there's some high tunnels they are very popular uh, it's good for season extension so as an example if you want to grow something starting from uh, march so yes we can use a high tunnel without any resources but resource when i talk about the resources mean the heat resources so not external heat resources like heaters or any other um, material to provide some heat in it so it's just like in a passive heat what we get from the sun so it's a good for uh, those purpose and if you want to develop or prepare some seedling before the crops transplanted or going into the grounds in june first week so before the first week of june till or if you go backward till march 15th of march to first week of june that's a season extension so we can use those high tunnels for those purpose even for even for the whole summer as well i will show some photograph in the next slide so how uh, there's a uh, high tunnel which was built I think it's uh, five, seven years back uh, in, a, uh, in a portage at CMCDC center. So that's the high tunnel we are using uh, for different uh, crop production. So another structures are the hot beds. They are again uh, similar to the cold frames. Uh, so same four wall glass top or the plastic top we can use. Uh, additional source of heat can be supplied like heating cables or hot water system, or we can make a de decomposing organic material in those ones. But these are the small structures. We can say these are very small structures. We can say this can serve the purpose of uh, the uh, greenhouse or the commercial production. Yes, obviously they can uh, serve the purpose for raising a seedling or flower beds or bedding plant or something like that. So this is the picture which I was talking about the high tunnel. So it's almost like a more than seven feet high uh, and it's 100 feet long tunnel. This is in Portage. So you can see the cucumber plants in front and uh, just beside this uh, cucumber plant, you can see some tomatoes over there. And on this side, you can see the small crop, even the lettuce and all small crops. And on the back, you will see the raspberry plants at the, uh, in these high tunnels as well. So it's not only just meant for uh, season extension it is for the full season as well so it's depending upon uh what do you want to do uh, how long you want to go for that crop production which crop you want to produce for what what is your purpose of production
So that's another one. So you can see some strawberries growing on grounds. So it's the same uh, high tunnel. So there's a strawberries, it's a small fruit, berries, we can grow in the high tunnels uh, as well. So that is it's like an, uh, an other type of, a, you can say, uh, inexpensive type of a structure. Now, before we go, what type of the structure we need it, how we can construct it, and what will be the value for that in the northern communities? So the most important thing is the uh, location. So what type of the location we are selecting? As I've just uh, mentioned, uh, if you want to go for a lean-to type, so do we have in that community uh, any building or any structure available we want to use that one and we want to run lean two type of a greenhouse uh, from east to west and uh, it's a south facing so if you have already existing building from where we can use resources so and the ground is good uh, the soil is good uh, so it's no dampness no water standing close to that greenhouse location what you select so then there's that will be fine so there are some like uh, physical characteristics like the topography, the drainage, uh, the uh, soil quality. So this is all under the site location we have to look for. If there is a site access, there is a utility access is there. The site should be like nearly leveled. If it is not fully leveled, it should be nearly leveled. Uh, if there is a slope, so just make sure that the slopes are level uh, because it increases the convenience of the uh, operations, what we wanted to do in the greenhouse and uh, make sure we are not uh, putting that greenhouse on a peak or in a valley because there are some concern in the peaks or in a valley so what concerns are these what is like improper circulation of the air so we will be uh, challenged by the improper circulation uh, the cold air settles in the low air and it will require more heating cost so there's a less heating or less passive uh, heat coming uh, from the solar uh, source it's more like a risk on a standing water or a flooding or a heavy rains. So these are some challenges what we uh, face if we don't uh, select the right uh, location or the good location. So similarly, if it is a drainage is good, the soil ranging between five to seven uh, pH level, which is good. If we are going to grow some like strawberries, I, as I have uh, shown you in the previous slide in a high tunnel. So that is good, the ideals is five to seven uh, pH and uh, should hold some nutrients, hold some water and uh, contribute to the plant growth and uh, support the uh, plant as well. So these characteristics, we need to look into that. When we talk about the obstruction, so make sure there's no uh, trees, no buildings, no recreational sites close to that area. And uh, if the building where you want to have that lean to type of a greenhouse, as an example, make sure you have an electricity, fuel, natural gas, propane, well, or water, or city water system, or a community uh, provided. Uh, some facilities are already there. There's a road or access. So close to the area where you can easily marketable or you can easily accessible uh, whatever you are producing. Now, the next thing is the crop to be cultivated. So for what purpose we are making a greenhouse? So it is important. It's just like for raising uh, nurseries for the year round production. Uh, it's an edible uh, crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and all other crops. Uh, or we are using uh, for the flowers or uh, any other horticultural crop. So that is important because based on those uh, crop, we need to make sure what location we are selecting, what type of the greenhouse we are selecting, because it depends upon uh, which months you are growing as well. It's like starting from March to October, or it's just like in, from uh, June to uh, October or uh, September. So all these things matter. So we have to make sure what we are going to make, what our five-year plan or one-year plan or a short-term plan or a long-term plan. So economics or the value of the crop. And then we talk about some climatic conditions. So general weather patterns, what the pattern of the air uh, in that area for the climatic conditions. So maximum and minimum temperatures, the precipitations or the winds uh, or some uh, snow, uh, amount of the snow normal. So like on an average basis. So definitely we cannot uh, say that exactly this much. So we know how much uh, snow load has the structure has to bear on its uh, glazing material or on top of the structure. Uh, or there's the water bodies, uh, number of the hours, 
of the daylight. So how many hours uh, we get the sunlight so we can properly orient the greenhouse. And when it uh, say about the orientation of the greenhouse, so uh, we talk about the positioning. So it's a east to west greenhouse facing the south. So normally uh, what we say is that above 40 degree north latitude, so the greenhouse should run east to west, means south facing. So if it is below 40 degree north latitude, so it should be north to south, so it's not facing uh, the south facing. So that's a standard, but this again depends, it's just like in a recommendation, but again, it depends upon the locality and how much the sun we get it and from which direction we get the sun. So that is uh, important. Uh, operating costs. Operating cost is the cost which is day to day we have to put on the greenhouse. So we have to make sure, the first thing is uh, like, we need to some uh, see some factors of like taxes. If there is a tax involved, it's a labor, it's a transportation. So it's basically a production cost. I will say so mostly operating cost is a production cost because if we are going towards a sustainable greenhouse, we try to maintain low uh, output energy uh, greenhouse. So we are not using uh, or outsourcing the energy. We are using a sustainable model or it's a passive uh, solar uh, type of a greenhouse model. So then it's mainly, it's we are talking about the production cost. So it's labor is the most important thing. How many community people are involved, if they are available, not available uh, for seeding, for planting, for harvesting, for weeding and all other purposes. Uh, the transportation is important. And next is the marketing and the production opportunities. So if it is a greenhouse built for marketing, so what are the opportunities? What type of the crops? What type, uh, what time of the year you need uh, to have your production ready? So these are all the considerations. So we are just going briefly all those ones. So I'm trying not to miss any of those uh, major thing. So there are small other things as well, but this is a most important before we select a type of a greenhouse or a structure of a greenhouse before we start working on a drafting, what type of the structure we want, uh, what type of the square footage on we want a greenhouse or what is the cubic volume of the greenhouse. So these factors are the most important in a planning part. So once we have planned, we see what location we have, what we want to cultivate or what we want to produce the year around uh, the climatic conditions, uh, where we want to orient the greenhouse, what resources we have available, and how we can manage our operating cost other than the initial uh, capital cost, and uh, what opportunities we have for the future, and how we can market uh, this crop or how we can produce our crop. So then we are good to go. Now, I will go uh, with three different types of the model. As I mentioned uh, earlier, so my main core uh, area of research is in greenhouses. When I started, so we started with a brand new greenhouses and these greenhouses built here in Brandon at a Sinovan Community College at the North Hill campus for teaching and research purpose. They are not a commercial production greenhouses, so they are teaching and research purpose. So I started in 2013 and then till today I'm working uh, and I have two uh, different publications already published in international journals and I already presented and I have a data. If someone needs some data, uh, like a scientific data, so I can share uh, that as well. Not in this presentation, later on if somebody needs. So we have a three different types of a model. We call it a high tech, which I have mentioned like in an A-frame type of a greenhouse, which normally commercial industry uses for the commercial production uh, for, for peppers, for cucumbers, and for tomatoes, normal. Uh, then there is a medium tech, what I called is the PS2, it's a passive solar two greenhouse type. And the third one we call is a low tech, which is a PS1, passive solar one greenhouses. So, it depends upon location, resources, and what we are planning for. It's a long term, it's a short term. So I'll show some uh, draft and pictures of uh, these three types of the greenhouse, what we have and what I have researched. So if you look at these greenhouse, so C1 is a commercial greenhouse. You can see anywhere, if you go in any commercial greenhouse, you will see this type of A-frame greenhouses, uh, fully equipped uh, with all technologies, uh, this greenhouse is being controlled by the Argus control system, so I can uh, make a 
uh, points uh, where I can maintain the temperature, maintain the humidity, ment uh, or regulate the uh, lighting conditions and all other operations. So it is a very high tech type of a greenhouse. So what industry normally uses? Uh, there's a two other three type of a greenhouses you can see beside. They are the south facing. They are running east to west, whereas C1 is running from north to south. Uh, the PS2 and PS1, these are the passive solar two and passive solar one. Uh, so both greenhouses, they are side by side. They both are facing uh, south. Uh, the PS2 is a medium tech. It is getting an external heat source from the solar. There's the evacuated tubes. If you can see here, these are all the evacuated solar tubes. They are bringing the glycol plus water uh, outside from the sun, capturing the heat and bringing it into the solar tank in here. And in the, from the solar tank, it is being regulated in the floor. So, and we can see the big picture, how the radiant floor, heat, uh, floor heating system is under the ground. So it is concrete. It is all uh, uh, concrete. Is uh, radiant floor heating is under the concrete. So it is being again operated by a thermostat or we can use a Argus control system to regulate when we need to have a heating system going under the floor to just to heat the greenhouse other than the passive greenhouse. Uh, in the PS1 system, so that's the difference. This is low tech. There's no uh, heating coming in from the outside. It's just only a passive solar. It's not an active solar as compared to uh, the PS2. PS2 has an active solar and a passive solar. This greenhouse, so its portion is half. If you make it a half, so you can see here. So this, these red ones, these are the black barrels. Basically, they are red. I have just highlighted for the heat sinks. Uh, so it's a passive solar heat sink. There are black barrel tubes. So we can put glycol or a water in it to just to capture the heat and radiate back uh, into the evening and the night. Similarly, there is a black wall from both greenhouses. Uh, it's a steel, black steel. So painted with a black, it's 24 gauge uh, steel wall. Uh, it's a basically a uh, wall, steel, uh, what would you call this? Uh, Mm, you can say it's a steel. Uh, basically, it's in a steel. I have some specification at the end. I will show you that as well. So the, it is covering the both areas for PS1 and PS2. So we call it a passive solar uh, wall. Uh, there is a furnace here to uh, run the greenhouse and the header house. So this is the header house for heating. And this furnace is basically is operating and giving a heat to these unit heaters. There's a one. Uh, three unit heaters in the C1, there's a one unit heater in the PS2, and there's a one in PS1. So in PS1 and PS2, the purpose of having these one to supplement the heat. So we don't want to use this as a primary source of a heat. This is to just to supplement. Let's say if you want to use in uh, January or February, when we definitely need to maintain uh, positive, above positive 10, and it's going below positive 10, then we use this, uh, unit heaters which uh, which is uh, working from this furnace otherwise we don't want to use it because the whole purpose of sustainability is to use the passive solar heat from outside and this is what we are working mostly uh, for the sustainability purpose or from the community purpose or in the uh, northern area purpose this type of a greenhouse if we don't afford or we don't have a sources for running a unit heaters or if it is attached with the building and if we have a, some electrical or the uh, power there, there, then might be, uh, we can use it. So I'm working in all three greenhouses, uh, C1, PS2 and PS1 in a different season. So I have a data from starting from uh, November till the end of April. So I consider these are the six cold months or the winter months. So November, December, January, February, March, and April. Although the March and April become a little bit warmer, so but it's still considering as a month, so I just have a data. And compare these two greenhouses. So what crops we can uh, produce in it, what type of, uh, what time of the year we can produce in both greenhouses, and what we can recommend for the northern areas. So based on the data, uh, just wanted to mention here, this type of the greenhouse is very good, workable, low cost type of a greenhouse. I'm talking about the PS1 now, because if you don't have a big resources over there, and if you want to use year round greenhouses, so with some amendment and with some uh, things a little bit modified, we can use this PS1 in the Northern areas for the year round uh, production for different crops.
Now, the question is how we can build this or what is the construction and what are the construction part for this greenhouse? So I'm focusing on the PS1 greenhouse, not on the PS2. Being more sustainable, being more low cost model, being uh, providing the necessity of a food or the production of a food year around. Some days, definitely in January, at the end of the January or start of the February, they were really, really cold and might be without the external source of heat. Inside, we cannot maintain below five, uh, above five degrees Celsius, yes. So we have to uh, make sure what type of the crop we are growing in those three months or 90 days. It's a cool season crop or it's a warm season crop. So definitely we are not going for a warm season crop. So if you want to grow something which is a cool season crop, yes, we will be able to grow uh, a cool season crops in those two months, especially January and February. So this is the uh, only two greenhouses now. So I've removed in this picture the C1. So this is with the gravel floor or can be without gravel. So it could be just right on ground. If you want to uh, produce crops on ground as I've shown you in the high tunnel. So yes, we can use the ground if it is a good uh, pH, soil is good. So we can use uh, direct soil. We can use the benches on top uh, on the floor. If you want to use some benches, steel benches, wooden benches or another different type of the benches. Yes, we can use these uh, benches as well. Uh, now the question is, uh, I'm now going to focus this greenhouse. So it's a lean to type of a greenhouse. I've already uh, shown this picture. I'm repeating this slide. So if you have an existing structure <clears throat> uh, in a community or any building, or if you don't have a building, it doesn't mean that you have to have a building. If you don't have a building, even then your uh, north facing wall could be built. So I'm going one by one through the constructions. So now if you look at this picture, uh, I have made a round, uh, this red circle to just to focus only on the PS1 greenhouse. So how we uh, constructed this greenhouse. The building uh, shown in this greenhouse is basically a header house. So where we use as a header house, we have mechanicals and all those things uh, like furnace, fridge, and my, our different ovens and all other structures are in place or it's used as a student lab as well. Uh, so that's the building which is attached with this greenhouse. So if you see, it's not quite parallel to the north wall with here, but if you, if we have to go with the parallel, we can go with the parallel or we can attach with the north wall as well. So there are different possibilities. So there is a metal tubing. Uh, it's almost like, I think it's a three to four inches tubing. It's being already welded and these arches has been already designed and made for this greenhouse. So that's the whole uh, PS1 type of a greenhouse. We put concrete because we want to use the benches here. But as I mentioned, if we don't want to use the benches, that's fine. We can use the uh, uh, grounds. We can use the soil if it is good, if the pH level is good, it's uh, drainage and it's hold uh, nutrients and water easily. And it's a good uh, drainage quality. Yes, definitely we can use that one. So that's the south facing so if you look from the south you can see these arches they are sitting on a pony wall so these pony wall can be constructed with two by six or a wooden structure or ca uh, could be a concrete material as well it's depending upon the resources and the uh, what type of the material is easily accessible and available uh, to the community so its construction can be done by as i mentioned could be with the wood two by six two by fours and good installations uh, placed in between and all these arches. Arches, definitely uh, these arches are a quite strong arches. It's like two in more than two inches diameter uh, tubing is being used. So if it is more than a one inch tubing and it is available, easily available and uh, can be used as well. So this diagram or this picture will give you an idea of basically what need to be uh, you, what, uh, what material is needed and uh, how we can access that material and how it can be fixed in a structure. So if you look from the inner side, so these are the same uh, tubings. It's a metal, it's painted uh, dark brown and it's going elevated and the structure is a wooden structure is standing on that one. So it can be a heavy load of snow. Uh, on the top and then you can put a glazing material on the south side. So I'll show some pictures as well. So you can see there are a lot of gravel. So we put a benches in it. 
From the outside, this is the north side of the wall. So north side of the wall, if it is just open, that's fine. If it is uh, attached with the structure or the existing building, that is fine as well. It will give a more support if it is attached with the building. So I think I, I would recommend if it is a building, then it will be more uh, helpful in uh, putting the structure on top and it bears a lot of loads of snow and become more stronger. Uh, this is from the another side. So if we are looking the picture uh, from this side, so we are looking from east to the west side of the greenhouse. So that's the west side where you can see that uh, machine, uh, the orange one, a machine. And if you look at the arches, they are sitting on a pony wall and there's a zigzag material is made by the two by six and there is an insulation material is being uh, put in that one. Here you will see from the inside wall, it's a black steel wall. So it's a basically a steel, black painted, 24 gauge. So it's capture a lot of energy and sometime like in the days like previous days or in July or August, if I touch, it's hard to touch this wall. It's so much heat in this July and August and it's radiated back. So, but the good thing is that we need to ventilate it. I will come to that point, how to ventilate the too much uh, heat in the greenhouse and especially in July and August. So this is another side view from the east side. Uh, this is uh, from the again uh, east side. So just to make sure that what type of the wood, how the pony wall is connected with these arches. Uh, this is the finishing of the outside. So it's depend. It, it is not necessarily we have to go with these all like uh, fancy type of a material if it is already attached with the building. So definitely we don't want, but we don't want, uh, we definitely want to have a door or exit door or some windows uh, for the, when there's a too much temperature, we need to make sure we have a venting uh, place for the heat buildup. So this is again uh, from, you can see from the east, uh, from the, sorry, west side towards the west side of the greenhouse. Now, inside is complete. You can see the sides and you can, uh, there's a different glazing material we can use on the east side, polycarbonate thin wall. It's a twin polycarbonate sheets are available in the market, it's easily accessible. It's not uh, very costly, so we can use on the sides. And for the glazing material, we can use the different types of the glazing material. So I'll just quickly move on to that one because it's particularly basically giving you an idea how to fix and how to anchor uh, those material onto the pony wall and on the sides wall. So this is a close uh, picture how it has been fixed on the top and on the sides. So basically presenting this one and showing this uh, structure in this webinar or in this uh, presentation is to, because a lot of people, they have a question. So how we can construct, what the material will be used, how we can fix those things. So it will be a long lasting. It's not if we are uh, putting some money on it. So it should be a long standing structure. So that's the whole point. So you can see it's almost like a finishing stage. And you see on the uh, west side wall, so this is a uh, twin layer polycarbonate wall. It's a good glazing material. It's more than 80, more than 80 percent. It's a light transmission in it, and it's a good diffusion uh, here. And on this side wall, we can use the same glazing material as well. We haven't used it, but if we wanted to use, we can use a glazing material on the north tapered wall here. Now here is the both greenhouses having a same glazing material for the light transmission. So we use a tarp in our first phase and in the second phase, like uh, after five years, we change the material. We change the material to the solar wrap now. Uh, it is a good material. It's good for like uh, 10 years, almost eight to 10 years, what they say. And uh, so we use this material, tar material is uh, for almost like six six years. And, and after six years, there's a lot of wear and tears happen and then we change our material. So uh, just let briefly go with the main mater uh, covering material. There's a two different types of the material. It's a glass covering, it's a plastic covering. I don't want to go into the more detail on those ones. The most uh, commonly sustainable type of the greenhouse, I will recommend is a polyethylene film or a polycarbonate. Glass is not recommendable. Uh, the rigid plastic is not recommendable. So that's why I'm just skipping these uh, few slides. But for your information, uh, yeah, uh, you must have these slides or must be available after this seminar, uh, this webinar. 
So different types of like acrylic plastics, polycarbonate, this is on the side walls. We can use these type of a uh, plastic, which is good. And we have used in our greenhouse at our North Hill campus, which is good. It's a durable, uh, it's a long lasting. Uh, it's not being fainted so far. It's a light transmission is good. Uh, but I won't recommend this type of a thing. Uh, not recommend means uh, for northern communities greenhouse uh, or for a low cost greenhouse. But yes, I'm not saying that this material is not good. It's for the different purpose for different greenhouses. Uh, polyethylene, yes, the cheapest material. Uh, we have to uh, less money. Uh, light transmission is good. I will show a slide where you can see the differences between all of these ones. So between the glass, double acrylic, double polycarbonate and uh, fiberglass reinforced plastic double layer uh, polyethylene and uh, polyvinyl so their relativity cost is given is like moderate to high and low is the obviously it's a low cost is the polyethylene but its longevity is only three to four years uh, its durability definitely is not very good as compared to the uh, double polycarbonate which is good but the light transmission is 84 percent as compared to the double polycarbonate so it's depending upon the resource so i will just say it's a double polycarbonate which is good as well as double uh, layer of polyethylene which is good as well there is another material which we have used last year after uh, seven years we use the tarp material so this is called a solar app so this is a new film we just found it it has uh, good that's the unit price for this one is six feet uh, i think it's a six feet wide and a five feet in length that's called the one unit uh, the beauty of this one which i know is there is a panels here and it slides in a panel so each a unit can easily slide we can uh, increase the length and width it's like customized whatever you want so this is a customized and if there is something wrong in a one panel it can easily be replaced you don't have to replace the whole uh, skin of your greenhouse so that's one of the materials so that's why i mentioned the price here we used it and we uh this is uh, available in customizable lengths in an increment of five feet uh it's at a 1000 bubbles per square meter r value is good which is 1.7 um, the uh, heat is good uh, retention is good its transmission is good diffusion is good uh, and as i mentioned uh, it's working on an external channel, so which is good if something's rip off or from a one side You can change only the one side. We don't have to replace all the uh, polyethylene or the whole uh, solar app uh, It can bear the load of 120 pounds per square foot snow load uh, winds uh, is an uh, 100 miles per hour wind rating uh, is given for uh channels i have already mentioned six foot wide five foot long so this is the information i got it from what uh, uh from the website as well so if somebody wants to uh, connect with those ones and wants some more information in detail so yes you can get uh these are just some of the prices and the cost so these are just a ballpark numbers might be this is a few years uh old numbers i haven't time to get the real numbers uh, because the time to time the uh, mark uh, the prices will change so it will just give you an idea of the polycarbonate panels like how they will use a 10 years effectivity our value is good the, how much is the roll and how much is the total uh, fastening screw and seals and whatever you need it for i i want able to get the price for that one for solex sp yes i got some uh, prices for the double poly uh, ethylene film I haven't got the prices again here. Uh, there is a one solar app. Yeah, solar app. I got. I will be able to get the price for that. Well, so I just mentioned the price here. And same, there's an uh, acrylic 8 mm clear plastic. So I've given the price. Uh, but this is just to give you an idea. So if we are using any glazing material, we have to make sure for how many years we are using, what type of the structure we are using, and what will be the best cost uh, to use uh, use uh, for that glazing material. Uh, so this is a black wall which I was mentioning on the north uh, side of the greenhouse So it's a 24 gauge black uh, charcoal AMP painted steel. So basically that's an steel uh, 24 gauge and that what uh, the, there is a uh, I will say it's a distributor available in Brandon area and hopefully should be they can supply anywhere uh, If somebody wants in their community, so it is not something special for the greenhouse It could be anything which is uh, in a steel uh, getting no rust or nothing and you can paint a black so 
that will work that will serve the purpose so it can be uh, if it is accessible in your community or in your area so that is fine as well so this is not something any uh, science behind the only science is that it is good quality uh, over the period of time it will stay it is black so it has to absorb the energy in the daytime and it will radiate back in the evening uh, within the in the greenhouse so this is something uh, after the finish uh, the greenhouse looks like on the uh, right hand side you will see that's the steel wall and that's the uh, polycarbonate uh, twin wall on the side of the greenhouse and on the top you can use a solar wrap or a double polyethylene or a tarp or any other material depending upon the resources or the cost of production like how expensive you want it to go and how long you want it to go what type of structure you are using again back to square one what is the location uh, for your greenhouse what is the type of your greenhouse so depending upon all of those things uh this is some construction parts like if you're looking for a poly 120 feet 30 feet wide so what will be the proxy co approximate cost for that one and if you're looking for straps poly fastener and all other things so what will be the uh, price for all of those metal arches i have highlighted these ones so it's a one inch square tub tubing and 24 uh, inches long it's a hardcore welding so if you go for this one it's almost like 2600 so basically what i am looking for uh, is that if you're looking for an arches so it can be an any metal which is like uh not rusting uh no rust should be in a steel good have a good flexibility and hardiness and easily accessible that will work so these are some other parts so i haven't put some uh, numbers for their prices uh, because it depends upon the locality and time of the sales what time we are, if you're looking for a two by six lumber or two by four lumber or any other plywood or any other sheet so it's a, when you are buying so you go and see in a different uh, stores uh, hardware stores so there's a different prices at different times so but these are the material is mainly being used like ratchets metal anchors or a two by six lumber uh, it's a plywood it's a deck screws and different head fasteners rounded fasteners and the bolt and carriage bolts or the cables and trunk buckles or the hinges so these are like mainly these materials or the parts being used if we uh, if you uh, uh if you are going to make your uh, greenhouse a sustainable greenhouse with a low cost or in other words uh, is the ps1 type of a greenhouse so uh just want to make uh, before uh, the summary, I just wanted to make sure that there's a three different models. Uh, our for recommendation of the Northern Greenhouse, I will go for PS1 type of a greenhouse. If the we are limited resources, if we have some resources to have some more power or uh, external heat resources like electrical or propane or any other, definitely we can go for PS2 as well, from where we can get uh, what's called the uh, passive solar heat, active solar, uh, active uh, passive solar and passive solar, both uh, solar heats. Whereas in PS1, we will just get only the passive solar heat. So it's depending upon uh, the location, depending upon the community, uh, depending upon all these factors, what we discuss in this presentation. So once we decide the location and the type of the greenhouse, so definitely we will work out on uh, what type of the crops we wanted to grow. It's just for a season extension or in a year round production and uh, how where, from where we can get the material, from where we can get the parts. So this is just in summary, uh, I will again, focus don't go for the ps2 type of a model if you don't have a resources available in a community because it will not be a sustainable in a way for a long run but yes ps1 is a sustainable model there are some challenges in january when there's a really really cold temperature goes below uh, like minus 30s so it will be a challenge to maintain inside the greenhouse but there are certain period we have to make sure if we are running uh, or producing a crop year round, we need few months or uh, not the few months, I will say just like in a weeks, like four to six weeks uh, for cleanup and all those things. So we can use those uh, months for those uh, or the weeks uh, or the days 
for make sure we are cleaning and sanitizing and all other stuff and making ready to, for the greenhouse. So it's a it's a greenhouse management as well. So we have to make a schedule for the greenhouse, which crop we are growing, when we are growing, what type of the crops we are growing. And at the end, I would like to say if I have a crop data uh, for all the cool season crops, when I have planted in P, uh, PS1 type of a greenhouse and PS2 type of a greenhouse, uh, when I have planted the uh, uh, warm season crops or the tropical crops, so I can share that data for the, for the community or anybody else who's wanting to have this type of a greenhouse in that in your uh, in your area. So, and what are the temperatures available? I have a five-year temperature available based on our greenhouse location, like in Brandon, I will say. So I can uh, safely say that in this type of a greenhouse, if there's a outside temperature, I'm just giving you an example. Don't quote it that right. So if outside temperature is 10 degrees Celsius in May, inside temperature will be 30 degrees Celsius without any additional heat. So if outside is sunny, and it's a positive one outside in the first week of March, inside will be at least above 10 degrees Celsius in a PS1 type of a greenhouse. So I have this type of a data which can easily uh, show you what type of the greenhouse can be grown in a what type of, uh, in, in, which, in which month of the year and how much we can produce and how we can produce. So uh, that's all about the greenhouse uh, for the Northern Manitoba. And if you guys have any question, uh, who is attending, who is listening this uh, webinar, so definitely uh, Laurie, Marnie can share my uh, contact uh, contacts where you can contact me. And if you need any data on the production or the crop or the uh, temperature, humidity inside, outside, at which month we can produce which crops uh, in a sustainable way or any other question uh, for constructing a greenhouse, but material, yes, definitely we can, uh, we can, I can like uh, help in telling that this material is good and how it is good means how it will support the sustainability of the greenhouse. Definitely we can work on that one uh yeah that's all so uh thank you for listening uh i hope uh i have uh tried to put some information which is valuable for the listeners and still if you have any question uh just write it down i can try to answer now if i don't have an answer at this point i can answer later on thank you for listening thanks sajat um lots of great information in that presentation for sure we do have some questions for you yep. and um some of them are a little bit in depth so that might be a conversation that you have later and uh you know for specific information but i'm sure you can you can uh can help out here today too so one of the questions is do you have any experience with overwintered greenhouses I am looking at a design that uses thermal mass by the University of Minnesota that is built for our climate zone and was wondering if anyone has experience with such structures. So if I have uh, heard the question is that overwintering greenhouse, is that right? Correct. Okay, so it's overwintering. If I understand that means working in the winters, right? We are producing in the winters. So this is structure which I have mentioned is the PS1. We have produced crop in uh, PS1 all year around. But the question is that if we supplement heat, if we have a supplement sources, yes, this model can be used as overwintering as well with some supplement heat. Okay, another question. How do you approach greenhouse food production in very northern communities? I'm sorry, I'm probably going to say this wrong. So you see Dene, for example, where the parent soil material is unsuitable. Are you recommending communities invest in composting to create soil? Yeah, this is a common challenge in our northern communities is availability of soil. Uh, Any ideas? So, sorry, can you repeat, please? How do you approach greenhouse food production in our very northern communities mm -hmm. where the parent soil material is unsuitable? Oh, Are you great. recommending communities invest in composting to create soil? Uh, yes, this is a, a, it's a very good question. So this is uh, that what I have mentioned in that the soil should be good, pH level should be five to seven, which is normally is not uh, 
we can find in the community. So definitely is the composting uh, is one of the way uh, to manage the soil over there. So I will again say, uh, make uh, just put some a little bit of an effort to just to select an area, uh, which is like the, in terms of the best area, whatever is available over there. So because if we are producing in a uh, soil which is not good, uh, so putting resources on that area is not a good idea. So definitely is the composting is the one of the way and uh, using the green manuring is one of the way, just use the green manure in the uh, that area or uh, in the community gardening or the uh, beds or whatever uh, the structures you are using at this point. So use the green manure at the end, use uh, like in the fall or in the at the end of August, uh, grow some like uh, leafy uh, crops and just bury it into the ground. It will improve the soil. Okay. Here's another question for you. Do you have any experience or information pertaining to running a greenhouse and chicken barn in a northern community? Uh, that's a very uh. <laughs> simple that's a very simple answer. I don't have an experience with the chickens. Yeah, okay. No, uh, I, I think, don't have sorry, uh, I don't have that. I think per perhaps what they're thinking of is um building the greenhouse on the side of the chicken barn and Perhaps that's, that's oh, if chicken. that is the, if that is the option, yeah, then definitely if there's a chicken barn, and as I mentioned, this PS1 is a good always to have a, some structure or a building a crop, and you can use the all the like uh, the chicken manure and all those things, yeah, as a compost as well. Great, and I think that's all the questions we have for the session currently. Certainly, people, if you if you think up some questions afterwards, um, certainly send them to myself, Marnie McCracken, and you can just Google me and I'll show up for Government of Manitoba. Yeah, and we have like a, these all three models which I have presented, like PS1, PS2, and C1, they are all like at the in Brandon at North Hill campus. If any community members, they wanted to come and have a look inside and look the details or something, definitely uh, we can arrange uh, their visits as well. Awesome. Okay, Lori, could I get the screen back? Sure, Ken. There were a couple of few questions still there, Marnie. Were you seeing oh. those or? Uh, yeah, I think there was a question about wanting the presentation and I'm going to cover how that can happen just in the next couple slides. Okay, and there was another one. Where do you order solar wrap from? Yeah, oh. and I there was a slide there. So I think the questioner was... Uh, Saying that she got that information in the next slide. Okay. okay. I think that's in the slide, yeah. Yeah, it's in the slide. So hopefully yeah. that's the, the information that that person was seeking. Great. Okay. So I'm just going to go to our next slide and I want to thank uh, Dr. Rao. That was great information and uh, certainly lots of things to think about. He's also been very uh, forward about offering to provide additional assistance. So if folks are looking for that assistance, uh, just to let us know. And uh, he's offered to uh, provide uh, information on greenhouses and, and structures that will work for our Northern Manitoba community. So thanks again, Sajad, and uh, lots of great information that I'm sure our folks are really appreciating. We do have additional resources that are specific to Northern Manitoba and Northern Manitoba growing conditions. And those resources are listed on the Manitoba government website, and they're housed on the Indigenous and Northern Relations webpage. So if you look, there are currently uh, 21 listed there. There are actually 22 because the, the current session will be placed on there as well. There are a variety of print resources and videos um, designed specific, specifically for our northern manitoba conditions you can also just google northern healthy foods initiative or nhfi and you can follow the path that way to to track down these these additional uh, resources the videos themselves uh, we have manitoba agriculture has a youtube channel 
and there's a northern gardening playlist where all of these videos will be housed uh, this video will also be located there and um, as soon as we are have a chance to get it uploaded so if you're looking to replay this video or to check out any other uh, resources or materials to check out the manitoba agriculture's youtube channel and the northern gardening playlist as well this session is being recorded there's the, the list of what's on there currently for the videos on our Manitoba Agriculture playlist. As well, this session is, has been recorded and everybody that registered for the session will get a link to the recording. And certainly we encourage you to share that link to your contact list and any folks that you know that might enjoy listening and, and uh, getting information on uh, Northern Greenhouses. So again, check out the, the um, other videos and resources that are available. Check back regularly because we are adding adding resources, materials, videos, and so on regularly. And so I'd encourage you to, to check back often. I'd like to thank all our participants for participating and uh, joining us today. We will be having sessions coming up and anybody who registered for this current session will receive an invitation to our future sessions. So thanks again all and have a great day, folks. I hope you uh, enjoyed the session. Bye now.